In the past seven years since I left the corporate life of an accountant, I traveled the world in search for experiences, friendships and answers. I started off as an English teacher and shared some special memories with good friends and happy children. I then pursued the monastic life as a Buddhist monk in Taiwan and learned the ancient Buddhist teachings from great masters and teachers. After two years, I decided to continue my journey into Thailand, where I met the love of my life and we established a school together to spread the joys of learning to hundreds of students. Now I'm back in Australia where it all began, but this time full of inspiration, experience and a greater sense of purpose. In my travels, I learned one truth, that everyone has something special to live for and a worthy message to share. My purpose is to reveal the treasure within us all and to show how precious life truly is. Join me on my podcast and together let's shine mindfulness into the beautiful lives of everyday people. Let's go. Hi everyone, I'm Byron from Mindfulness Podcast where we shine mindfulness into the beautiful lives of everyday people and today I've invited my very good friend Faisal to share his life stories and experiences so that we can all live and learn vicariously through him. How's it going Faisal? Yeah, not too bad. I'm um, pretty good. Feeling fit. What about yourself? Good, I'm doing very well, thank you. So this is the second episode, so very excited. Yeah. And especially to have a very close friend like you. So let's have some thank fun. You. Yeah, I'm keen. So to set the context for the rest of the podcast, I'm going to introduce Faisal to the viewers and then you can add on what I've missed. How's that sound? Sounds great. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So Faisal and I go way back. We met over 10 years ago and have been close friends ever since. Despite me being overseas, for a few years, I always thought that my friendship with Faisal was as strong as ever and that in both our hearts, we both had ourselves and our positions for each other. And the reason why Faisal is such an important role model and icon for me, and it's because he embodies many of the qualities that I lack but admire deeply. For example, Faisal is an aspiring musician, film director and actor who is very motivated to share his unique vision and ideas of society to the world through his creative and lyrical storytelling. Faisal has also produced some amazing songs such as Big Love and Glass Piston and is building his fan base online and on social media. And Faisal has also written some short form film scripts and he's currently planning to produce and direct them in movies. But most importantly, Faisal is very optimistic, passionate, and a very kind man, very close friend who has his close family and friends very close to his heart. And that's the Faisal I know and love. But what about yourself? How would you describe yourself in the work that you do? Oh, firstly, thank you. That was a really nice intro. I really hey, appreciate thanks. that. Um, so I have been making music for the past year or so. I've been dabbling in film and directing over the last year, about a year and a half as well. Mm. Um, writing scripts are something I've been doing for a long time, actually. I've been writing scripts for maybe 10 years now, actually. Wow. Um, there's a few that I have that I've been meaning to revise, but yeah, it goes a long way back. But I actually started playing music a long time ago, more than 10 years ago. Mm. And it wasn't until about a year ago that I decided uh, maybe it's time to take what I know to the next level. So mm. I started uh, producing music in my studio and making stuff and putting it on Triple J. Uh, wow. You can find it on Triple J on Triple J Unearthed. And uh, when it comes to film and directing, I have a YouTube channel that I have been working on for about two years or so. Cool. Um, dealing with mainly video essays of that nature regarding social topics and even general interest topics that interest me. For example, uh, my favorite musician, James Blake, I've done a video essay about him and a few other video essays, as well as compilations regarding social issues that we face, specifically social issues in Australia. Mm. So yeah, I'd say that's probably the gist of it, but there's still so much more that I need to accomplish with where I'm going. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really hopeful and I'm glad to be here on your podcast. Awesome. So what would you say are the three or at least some key values that, you, that are important to you and how is that reflected in the way you live your life and your creativity? Well, I have a few values that I think would be paramount, but I think the first one would be hard work. Mm. When it comes to making, when it comes to anything really, you really want to put what you think you can put into it regarding how much you can offer. So. 
I work really hard on my music because it's something that I'm really passionate about. Mm. But the main reason I work hard because it is a fulfilling aspect to me. It yeah. feels good to work hard. Nice. It feels good to, it feels like you've accomplished something. Yeah. So when it comes to music, when it comes to anything, cleaning the dishes, mopping the floor, you want to get the job done right, but you want to mm. get it done in an efficient way where you can look back and be like, ah, hey, I've done a good job. I can reward myself if mm. I feel, or I can plan for the next thing that I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. You'd know all about that as well. Yeah, right? for sure. That's like mindfulness in a nutshell. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, like, you whatever you're doing, you're doing it mindfully. So as you said, like when you're cleaning or when you're making uh, movies or when you're watching TV, do it mindfully. Yeah. And it's a lot, a lot more fulfilling, a lot happier. The, the quality is just better when it's done mindfully. Oh, just good. like you're saying, when you're doing it, you know, when you're doing, when it's reflecting your hard work and your sincerity. Yeah, oh, I totally agree with that. That yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it also builds character, I believe. Yeah. Working hard makes you not take things so easy sometimes and realize that you're not so spongy, if that mm. makes sense. Like you're not as malleable as you thought. You mm. are a lot tougher than you seem. Mm. And when you realize that you're not like glass and you're a lot tougher than that, there's so much you realize you can accomplish. Wow. Like, there's no border that you can't break down and there's, yes, there's a saying, the sky's the limit, but yeah. you can go further than that. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's just one aspect that I think is really important. The second aspect, I think, in terms of my creativity, uh, truth is a huge, mm. I really value truth in the regard of social issues. Mm. I bring a lot of that into my music. Uh, for example, there's this film called They Live. Uh, it is a, um, it's a real social commentary on about the world and how the world works and who is really who is really swaying the the way we think mm. the way we work and the lives that we live mm. in it's it's like a really big system and i try to bring those issues to light in my music mm. in a way that is expressive for me because yeah. it can bring out a lot of uh, anger in a sense mm. but the important thing is is to express that mm. so truth is above all one of the most important things that i value and I'd say a third thing is respect. Wow, nice. Yeah, you you have to. There's a so there's a there's a theory I follow called game theory. I don't mm. know. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so you know yeah. exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah, game theory is all about you give what you get. Yeah, type of thing. So if you walk across the street and someone is being standoffish. Um, you're going to want to be a bit standoffish, but you don't need to be that way and you don't need le to let that affect you. Mm. But if you smile at someone, it might make their day. Mm. You know, um, It might be, it's not a reflection of you. It's just something that you want to bring out of respect to your mm. fellow man. Mm. It doesn't matter how they are treating you mm. at the end of the day. Obviously, you're not going to be a pushover. I don't mm. think anyone wants to be a pushover at the end of the day. But the only way a society can function properly is with respect, not just to each other, but to the world and what we do yeah. to the rules that we have at play. Yeah. Um, not all rules. A lot of rules are meant to be broken in my opinion, <laughs> but in terms of just rules, like parking your car properly, you know, yeah. you're not going to park over two lines. It's a social etiquette. Like yeah. it's not how society should function. Yeah. You know, you've got to, you've got to really pay it forward. Yeah. You, if everyone just thought about the next person, you could put that in terms of the next generation. Even mm. if everyone thought about what can I do? that leaves enough respect for the next generation to function mm. in a society that is beautiful. Mm. It's amazing, Faith, because the three values you, you've described are basically the three key values that can progress society forward. You know, oh, yeah. you have to work hard. You need to abide by what is true and you have to have respect. Yeah. So it's amazing that those three values are so fundamental and so important to a to a harmonious society. Yeah. And yeah, man, I completely agree. And I can see that how that's reflected in how you live your life and how you create. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely, Thank you, man, you embody man. those three values, man. I think it's very important, you know? Yeah. And I think um, we all can lose focus sometimes, but as long as we keep those core things in mind, mm. um, like you said, mindfulness, you know? So yeah. yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. Mm. And though we've, ex we've explored the values, but then what about in terms of how the values shape the energy and the intention you bring to every day to perform at your desired level? Do you have any like key intentions or key energies that you want to bring and try to manifest every day? Oh, definitely. There's so, there are so, 
Humans are an array of emotions. You know, mm. if, you, if you put three humans in a room, there will be six opinions. <laughs> I, I love that saying. It's from one of my favorite games, Mass Effect. Yeah. It might have been from somewhere else. I don't know. Um, but I'd say a lot of energy that I bring in the day is inspiration. Uh, I need a bit of inspiration. Mm. Not always, mm. but it does help a lot when you want to get things accomplished, you know. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about like, oh, I saw this movie or I heard this song and it's a great inspiration and now I want to pay it forward and I want to create something that's in the vein of that, that brings my creativity out. It's in the regard of just small things, you know, like, ah, mm. oh, that, that dog I saw on the street is really nice. It's well-groomed. It's got a good owner. The yeah, person's wow. it's walking. That's how you know someone's a good owner of the dog is if the dog's not like, yeah. you know, being yanked away, yeah. trying to like run around because it hasn't been out all day. It's like yeah. right next to them, you know, yeah. or even just, driving on the road you know mm. like that's a that's a big thing for me you know if you're mm. not using your blinkers it's a clear indicator to me of like i don't know it's inspiring to see people just doing the right thing yeah i guess but yeah definitely i have a lot of inspiration throughout the day yeah that really helps me cultivate a really strong work ethic mm. as well as a fun life yeah because you've got to have fun if you're not having fun there's there's really no point yeah like, how how mm. important phase would you say inspiration and, and i guess fun how in, how important are they to like creativity because what you do is requires a lot of like creative juices but how important does inspiration play to that it's very important it's it's extremely important if you ask me mm. because there are so many times that i'm making something and it's just become a bit of a bit of a task it mm. becomes a bit of a process you know yeah. like a, when you're creating music, I don't know if anyone out there, I'm sure there are a lot of people that do create music, um, know this, but when you are fiddling around with programs and mixing and mastering and things like that, it can get a bit repetitive and a bit uh, mundane mm. at times. So you've really got to learn to pace yourself. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. pace yourself and make sure that it's not becoming a task. Like it's not becoming a chore as yeah. soon as it starts to become more than as soon as it starts to become not fun to you yeah then maybe there's something you need to reassess and maybe like that will be that will be carried out into the quality and then the people might even feel the energy is different if yeah you're do if you're bored oh 110 percent yeah. agree with that you know like a lot yeah. of great artists they make music and at the start of their career, they're so amazing. And you're mm. just like, wow, what is this? This is, yeah. I've never heard anything like this, but as their albums progress, you can feel like it's just become a bit of a task to them, you know, mm. like not all artists, but yeah. there are a few artists that you could name like that. And nobody, nobody can resonate with that. Not mm. a lot of people will resonate with that. So then like, what if there are aspiring um, film directors or musicians out there trying to understand what a life of a creative would be like? What are the overall thoughts and feelings that you would experience on a day-to-day? -day? Well, definitely inspiration. There's that mm, one. Yeah. Um, you feel inspired. You get up and you listen to something and you're just like, wow, that was really cool. How did they do that? Um, that makes me want to, that makes me want to jump on the keyboard right now and lay a melody down on analog lab or something, you know, yeah. um, definitely there's the fun factor as well, but yeah. Also a sense of discipline. Mm. Um, you need to give yourself that discipline to, hey, I said I was going to accomplish something. I've got to get up every day and I've got to chip away at it slowly. So, mm. and don't get me wrong. It's, I, I'm not, I don't, there are days when I don't, you know, there are mm. days when I just, uh, I, I'm not feeling it today. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to focus on something else today. Yeah. It's definitely a sense of fun. Creativity is the main one. You feel creative. You want to be creative. You want to be you want to show something that is more than yourself, I guess. Mm, yeah, that, yeah, that's a huge one. That's a that's a really big feeling that you get throughout the day, mm -hmm. as well as the mundane here and there. But like I said, you just break it up. You go for a walk. You you go watch something on YouTube, or you go clean the house, or yeah. you go walk the dog or something. You know, yeah, like something awesome. That just breaks it up. So inspiration, uh, enjoyment. And discipline. Discipline, yeah. yeah. Discipline's a big one. Yeah. It's really underrated. Yeah. It's definitely very difficult because discipline means doing the things you don't want to do. Yeah. And that's hard. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. really hard. Like, <laughs> it's not like as fun as something is when you do something every single day. Yeah. It can not, not to, I can only speak for myself. It can get a bit 
monotonous. Yeah, for sure. Mm. And so the now we move on to the second segment, which is more about obstacles and, ad- and adversities. So the first question regarding this one would be, what are the main obstacles you've had to overcome to get to where you are today, where you're, you know, at a higher level, thriving and, you know, very positive. And how did you overcome those obstacles in case there are people out there experiencing something similar? That's a great, that's a really great question, Byron. That's a really great question. Yeah, thanks. Uh, firstly, the biggest obstacle, actually, no, I'll, I'll get to that last. Mm. Uh, like I said, discipline was one of the biggest things that I personally had to overcome. Mm. Uh, there was a period of my life where, like I said, I've been doing music for 10 years, but it's only in the last year that I've decided, hey, I want to take this to the next level and I mm. want to really accomplish something here and really show something for all the all the learning hours that I've put into this, you mm. know. Um, High five, by the way. Oh, thanks. So that, yeah, that's bro. very awesome. That oh, cheers. It's better late, better late than never, right? That's the saying, and it's yeah. so damn true. Better late than never. Yeah. yeah. So how did you overcome that? How how did you like create that motivation and energy within to like say like okay, I'm, I'll start now. I won't let it yeah. keep you know. Believe believe me or not, it was um, during COVID actually, mm. and I'm sure a lot of people will like this, but COVID sprang something out of a need of desperation for mm. me that was just like, hey. I'm going to work, I'm coming home, I'm tired, I can't leave the house, I've only got my certain area that I can dwell in and like do stuff and you feel limited. I felt really limited in this area but I realised like, wait a minute, I've got everything I need here, I've got everything I need here to do what I want to do. Mm. So out of that need of desperation and longingness, Mm. longingness, I decided, you know what, I have the means to do everything I need to do in terms of creating music. All I need to do is get the right gear Mm. and learn. And we were so fortunate to be in the age of YouTube where if you want to learn how to do almost anything now, there is a tutorial for it. Basically, we're creating this podcast with two phones and a microphone. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. So there you go. Um, But also there's a saying that I love that really quickly, limitation breeds creativity. Yeah, wow. and I that I nice. I swear by that saying, limitation yeah. breeds creativity because yeah. it really does. So I decided I'm going to jump on, I'm going to make some music, and yeah, that's what I did. Mm. And um, ever since I've really been coming into myself and learning more about myself every day. So then, dude, that's awesome, by the way, because mm. it's you, you know, life is all about you know the good times and the bad times. We yeah. enjoy the good times, but it's the bad times that force us to grow as a person. It really does. And so if there are people out there that, you know, want to emulate what you're doing and they're in, in the same obstacle where they lack the discipline or they lack that creativity or they're stuck in a rut, what would be the key insight from your uh, lessons to help them or potentially us in the future um, create that inner driving motivation so that we are not having to always fall back into that hole? Well, for myself, it was the need of desperation that sort yeah. of forced me to get out of it. Desperation. But it was also a need for creativity mm. at the end of the day. I wanted to make something that was, you know, bigger than myself because I knew I could do it. Like mm. I knew I had something to contribute musically. Yeah. You know, like I, I play a few instruments and I sing as well. So yeah. awesome. definitely that need for, of desperation. But also I think inspiration is a big part of it, but it's not necessarily the end all be all. There's there there's a tipping point. Mm. There's definitely a tipping point where you're either going to and I I fell back so many times, man. I fell back so many times mm. into this zone of like, ah, eh, don't worry about it. I'll just mm. I'll just eat potato chips and watch Netflix. You know. Yeah, I think we've all been there. <laughs> For sure, me too. I yeah. Oh yeah. Discipline is so difficult. It's the hard part is you know. You start and then you stop. You start and then you stop. Yeah. And the hard part is to start and not stop. And just keep going. Yeah, keep creating the, the momentum. That's right. Keep the make momentum. It, you know, sustainable. You know? That's the yeah. hard part. There's a there's an old saying. It's like um, life is like walking on a uh, like life is like moving on an escalator going against you. Wow. If you stay still, you go backwards. <laughs> yeah. You know. But if the point is keep moving. Yeah. You know, keep moving. It doesn't matter if you're going slow. Yeah. You're still taking those steps yeah you're still moving forward so yeah. at the end of the day that's all if you go back you go back but mm. don't stop like, yeah it's interesting because you said that the keen sight was for you 
was the desperation was what led to that you know that mot motivation and there's a saying that um people are usually forced to change and develop from two catalysts one is desperation and one is inspiration uh -huh. and the hard the the scary part is most people are in the middle they're neither desperate enough or inspired enough to make real change uh, so they spend a lot of time just drifting they're in change purgatory <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're in the middle exactly, well exactly. There, you, there you go i didn't even uh, that's so, a really great point i guess if anyone is in, in that rut finding that inspiration is a lot easier to go through than waiting for that desperate level yes yeah. no, totally agree because that desperation might take forever yeah. you know to, for it to finally tip for you yeah you know? so and then what about any current challenges that you're going through right now just so that we can connect with the present day Faisal what are the key challenges that you're facing t t today as a creative great question I am going right now through a learning curve regarding mm. creating music there's yeah. a certain amount that yes you can learn on YouTube but there is a whole bunch of stuff that is going to take a bit more expertise mm. to get to the next level yeah um mixing and mastering is something that's very subjective when it comes to music so it's mm. all pretty much by ear yeah. but there are professionals that you can learn from mm. you know and all that stuff is it's out there and it's good to have that that information but that's one of the biggest obstacles not only that but um i'd say as far as vocal recording goes that's mm. a really like a lot of musicians will know this vocal recording you need to get the right the right settings for your vocal re records mm. and that is really hard to do sometimes especially when you're in a studio like the sound might be drowned out by background noise or yeah. something like that um but also the biggest thing would be a balance of work and fun yeah fun being the music part yeah right um so I work nine to five, nine to five, you know, mm. and that can be quite draining. Mm. Like, uh, physically that's the work you need to do. Mm. And then you come home and then you are quite drained mm. me, especially. And then you don't have time to do the work you want to do. Mm. And that's the stuff that you, you know, you really wanted to do, but you're just so exhausted and you're so mentally drained from all the stuff you've had to do in the day not taking away we all have to pay our bills and we all need to work hard and earn a living you know yeah. but that's the biggest one for me that sort of that draining feeling of like ah oh, but you've just got to push through it you've yeah. just got to push through man Faisal, like you mentioned very interesting challenges that everyone goes through the first one being learning because yeah. the the hard part is whatever we're doing we have to learn something to apply to get what we want the good news as you mentioned is that the material, the contents all out there, we're just gonna find it. We can learn anything at this day and age. Yeah, we really can. Yeah. Like, just... And then the second thing, Faisal, when was um like that nine to five, finding the balance between work and fun and you know, time for creativity. Yeah. Um, do you envision a day where you're able to combine the two together, or would you find them as like always the struggle between, you know, doing my work to to get my wage and then having the freedom to focus on what I truly love, which is creating music, movies. Yeah, well, I do envision myself doing music as a full time. Yeah, yeah. But that there's a saying and it goes, make your passion your profession and you'll never work in a day to your life. Great saying, but there is a bit of subjectivity there because no matter what job you do, no matter how good you are at it, mm. there is definitely an element of what's the word work, <laughs> work. yeah that's yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. you yeah. took the words out of my mouth there's an element of work there that needs to be respected acknowledged and appreciated mm. so it, i definitely see myself coming to a point where i can do this full time and if not then they've definitely find a balance between the two and i'm still finding that balance i'm still in between that area but for yeah. now what's working for me is really working for me yeah and it makes me very happy that's awesome, man. This is like the perfect place to pivot to the final segment, which is more about like future pacing. Yeah. And here the question would be, what are you looking forward to in the future that is like giving you that drive and excitement? Oh, I want, I'm really looking forward to finally playing live. Wow. Yeah. I, you played live before. Yeah. Thank you, man. I have. Yeah. I played live um, a lot back in the day, but properly this time in my own material, when I was playing live before, it was mainly covers, mm. you know, it was like Valerie, you know, um, yeah. Amy Winehouse, love Amy Winehouse, rest in peace. 
um it's 12 years this month since she passed away how crazy is that wow, that's yeah that's ages yeah but um playing my own stuff live and just having the right tools which i do have now yeah that is something i'm really looking forward to yeah. but in order to get there another thing i'm looking really forward to is growing a fan base yeah that is loving my stuff because i'm still finding a sound that i really love and i believe in music um, you don't have to define yourself to one sound anymore. Mm. Back in the day, you were a country artist. You were just a country artist. Mm. You were a rapper. You were just a rapper. Yeah. Now you can be a country rapper. You know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Look at um, Lil Nas X, for example. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just just really looking forward to playing live, building a fan base that really likes, for everyone out there that does really like my music, I really do appreciate it. Love you guys. Um, that really, like, will come and see me live and, will just like connect with what I'm saying, mm. you know, like I think for me, so many artists I've listened to over the years and I'm just like, wow, you are saying things that are in my head. Mm. Like you are you're taking the words out of my brain. Like yeah. that's amazing. And yeah. like, I just really want to, not in a narcissistic way, in a sense of like, wow, I can relate to that, man. That's really cool. Mm. Like, I really like what you said there about this topic. And I really, I really respect that. Mm. Awesome. Mm. And so like for mm. the potential new viewers out there, how would you describe your music and the meaning that you're trying to communicate through your, through your music? Well, what genre? At this point, it's really hard to say because I am still dabbling. I've done a few electronic tracks with a hip hop vibe. Mm. I've done a few, uh, electronic ambient vibe songs but they've all they've all basically got a feel of a hip-hop background but mm. there's i don't know if any of you guys have listened to james blake but i really try to emulate the sound that he brings which is like an experimental hip-hop pop sound mm. uh as well as the band called tame impala they are a psychedelic rock band yeah and i'm trying to incorporate elements of those few artists where i can mm. to make it really really something different but it's also really cool you know yeah so i'm just trying to combine those elements and seeing what works what doesn't work and if it doesn't work then i'll probably put it out anyway because it's something different you know yeah well for anyone who's interested we'll put the links down below and uh if you want to get get in touch and be part of the fan base and i'm, ho I'm hoping that you know you know you can grow that as soon as like as fast and as as organically yeah in a yeah fun thank, way. thank you man yeah yeah if, if all goes well yeah so yeah there we go. And so the next question, which also ties into this one, would be how would you have to develop yourself to manifest that future you want in terms of being able to play live and, you know, communicate on a, on a personal level with your fans? So how would you have to develop yourself to manifest that? Great question. Uh, obviously, getting over the fear of playing live is a huge thing mm -hmm. that comes into doubt. Mm. Um, we all go through doubt. It's one of the things that holds, holds you back. For sure. We're, for sure. We're, we're talking about desperation. The reason we bounce back to things is doubt. Yeah. Um, playing live is something I'm very comfortable with, you know? Yeah. But, uh, in terms of, yeah, playing live is something I'm really comfortable with. Yeah. But in terms of, you know, performing in front of people, it can be quite nerve wracking, especially if you don't know the crowd. Yeah. Yeah what they're about and maybe they're a rowdy crowd who knows mm. um you need to be focused mm. absolutely focused and disciplined on okay i'm going to get this done and i'm going to practice it and i'm going mm. to make it perfect so that when it does come time to perform i can get everything down in the right way mm. yeah it's interesting because i was a teacher for about five years and i thought being a teacher is about teaching but there's a lot more than that there's like for example classroom management there's, you know, planning and there's just understanding and communication. So yeah. when we talked about like, when we're talking about playing music live, is there more to that than just playing and singing? You mentioned like, um, knowing how to, like it is a rowdy crowd, how like, you know, like the challenges that are involved in that, you'd have to be prepared to deal with whatever comes up live. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's, you can take things as they come, but it's more of the sense of knowing the crowd that you're going to get into, mm, knowing yeah. the venue you are about to play, yeah. knowing your sound equipment and what sounds good live. Yeah. No two things sound the same in the same environment in terms of like your speaker setup yeah. or your synthesizer, your vocal, your microphone setup. Yeah. It's all about the acoustics of the room. You have to take that into consideration wow. as well. Wow. Um, tuning up, getting everything in tune and in order, making sure you are 
prepared to get to the venue at an early enough time for sound check, things yeah. like of that nature. It definitely there's so much more that goes into it. They're you know? just playing and singing. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. But sure. all but for the most part it's it's like an accumulation of all those years of practice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah nice. And then yeah, when you finally get to that point. Yeah. So how far off are you from playing live consistently? I would say in the end of the year also wow. I'm, I've been planning well I've been actually been planning to uh, pitch to a couple of record labels uh, in terms of a portfolio this is another part that goes into the planning uh, I should have mentioned earlier but mm. when you are going to pitch to a record label you need to make a portfolio yeah and a portfolio details what you are about your personality uh, what songs you have made you put them in there mm. some photographs some sort of media that sort of encompasses like what you are and what image you bring yeah those are things that um that is the that is one of the main things i'm really looking forward to putting out there and that's yeah. going to be around the same time i start performing live okay yeah. awesome. and mm. where would you be performing would it be like at the bars yeah at the clubs at the bars i haven't really so i've actually um i used to busk i don't know if you, you know what busking yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like playing on the street like yeah playing on the street i got yeah you, ha you have to get a busking permit yeah uh from town hall if you want to busk just wow. if anyone's curious <laughs> it's like 30 bucks for a year it's, it's oh, yeah. yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. like 30 or, or 50 bucks okay yeah and um that was that was one of the best experiences of my life playing wow. just randomly going to an area going to the beach and playing or wow. just doing it because you know, you want to Just do put it. Put yourself out there. Yeah, put yourself out there. You yeah. know, you don't have to. It doesn't always have to be at a venue. Yeah. Um. So there's that element as well, but definitely yeah. like bars and things like that is one of the first. It's one of the first steps you want to get into when you're performing is like small venues and stuff. Mm. You're not going to be performing at like a Accor Arena in Olympic Park or anything. Yeah. Like that, you know, like, <laughs> no, yeah. if you do, like, oh man, you got some connections. Right? <laughs> like, you got some rich connections. <laughs> That'd be crazy to have to expect to fill out a stadium. Yeah, zero fan base. Yeah, from zero fans. <laughs> it's like a movie or something. <laughs> <laughs> like School of Rock. <laughs> so, like, you you mentioned, you know, like over ten years of experience in preparation to get to where you are today. What would you say would be the key nugget of insight slash lesson that you're able to share and communicate to the viewers that are listening today? How to like combine everything over the past 10 years to create that one nugget of truth or wisdom. Don't doubt yourself. Mm, whatever, yeah. whatever you, doubt is the biggest dream killer there <laughs> yeah. is, you know, yeah. so many times I doubted myself. I would have done this a lot sooner if I wow. didn't have the, that if I had the self esteem, back then, which I have now yeah. to do what I'm doing now. Yeah. Don't doubt yourself. It's the biggest dream killer. Like we were saying, oh, yeah, I'm, I might do this. Oh, no, nah, I'll just eat potato chips and mm. watch Netflix, you know? Yeah. Don't doubt. And for me personally, you don't have to do everything yourself. Mm. You know, one of the biggest things I had trouble with was like, no, nah, I can do all of this myself. I can produce, I can mix, I can, I can market myself, mm. I can you know, learn all this off the fly, just like wing it. Yeah. Like, and I'm sure there are some people who can, but don't be afraid to reach out. You know, yeah. the ego is one of the biggest things that kept me in that space for such a long time because wow. I was like, ah, I, I'm a rock star. I can do this all myself, you know? Yeah. But like I said, there's so much help out there. When you don't know something, ask. Yeah. Always ask because, and don't be ashamed to ask because yeah. we all need help. No man can do this life alone. Man, no man honestly, can do this life alone. It has, dude, doubt and ego seems like the major obstacles that prevent us from achieving and actualizing our potentials. Yeah. Doubt, dude, like many, I feel like many people would not follow their dreams for the rest of their lives, for their entire life because of doubt. <laughs> and then ego being like, you know, man, like ego has caused me so many problems, pride, not wanting to reach out. Or yeah. feeling like, you know, I, I'm, I'm better than this. Or yeah. I don't want to put myself out there. What if people judge me and stuff like that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I, I definitely see those two being key obstacles yeah. in anyone's development. It, yeah. I feel like a lot of people have this issue. And I feel yeah. like if we connect, if you connect with yourself a little bit more and you sit down and like, 
you know, writing your thoughts and feelings down, how you feel about things. Yeah. You'll be able to understand yourself a bit better. Yeah. For so sure. yeah, it's most of us are dealing with these things, but we don't even realize it. It's almost like being comfortable with being vulnerable, being yes. comfortable with like opening up, taking risks, you know, putting yourself, taking yourself out of that comfort zone, which is so comfortable. Yeah. But yeah. I yeah. Guess, yeah. There's a, there's a saying that goes, a ship in harbour is safe. <laughs> that's not why ships are built. That's amazing. I love that saying. Yeah, right? yeah, love like, it. So, yeah. So, Faisal, thank you so much. This is why I love Faisal so much. Great energy, great smile, so much dreams and so ambitious. What is... Thank you so much for coming, by the way. Oh, dude, thank you for having me. <laughs> so good to see you too, bro. You're such an inspiration, bro. Thank you. So much fun. Like, yeah, always. Yeah. Mm. What is the final message you'd like to leave to all your potential fans and viewers out there today? If you have something in your life that you want to do or something is holding you back, sit down with yourself and write it out what you think is holding you back and have a really good reach within yourself and say hey can i overcome this yes no maybe if you can't look for help talk to the people that are around you and if you have no one around you to talk to there are a lot of services that you can talk to people you know you can talk to me you know like it's it's so important to just life is too short don't sit around and wait on your dreams you know like yeah. i'm 33 now i i i wish i could have done this 10 years ago yeah. not that i'm I'm kicking myself for wasted time because I'm so happy because I'm doing this yeah, now, nice. you know, but yeah, sure. don't doubt yourself. Yeah. Like if you, if you really want to achieve something, go out and do it. Yeah. Take the first step, get yourself out of your comfort zone. Nothing grows in a comfort zone and you will feel yourself, you will feel happier. Awesome. Very awesome. well said, Faisal. Thank you so much again. Bro, thank you for having me. hope to have you again next time. Yeah, dude. I, 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 I'd love to come back. Dude. Yeah, that's like awesome. I said, bro, you've always been an inspiration to me. And I'm always so happy, so happy to see your face, bro, and yeah. catch up. <laughs> you know? Awesome. Thanks, guys. And thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye bye. See you guys. <laughs> dude, I'm fine, bro. I'm fine. How did that, that go? Is that good? That was sweet. Yeah? Let me just check yeah. if the camera's not running. <laughs>